Hey y'all, welcome to Miss Clark's chemistry class. I've been teaching chemistry for 20 years and I'm here to help you understand everything that you just learned in class. Let's learn about naming acids. If this is what you're looking for, go ahead and press the like button. If you're looking for more information about naming molecular compounds that are not acids, I do have a tutorial on that. It's in the description. Go ahead and check that out. But let's get going on naming acids. Go get your notes, go get a periodic table, get something to write with, and let's get started. Let's name acids. Acids are molecular compounds because they're held together with covalent bonds. But acids don't really behave like molecular compounds. They kind of act like ionic compounds. So they have their own special rules for naming and writing. Thank goodness though, since they do behave a lot like ionic, some of the rules cross over. So let's get started with naming. First, we need to be able to identify an acid. For what we need to know right now for naming acids, let's say that all acids begin with hydrogen. So here's a generic formula for an acid. Starts with the hydrogen, and then there's going to be either a nonmetal or a polyatomic ion. Now, really and truly, all acids do not have to begin with hydrogen. But the naming system we're about to learn is when acids begin with hydrogen. But first we need to talk about the two types of acids. The first type of acid is called binary acids, but we also have oxy acids. You can probably guess from the word oxy acid that these acids have oxygen in them. Because remember, acids start with H, and even though hydrogen is a non-metal, it sometimes acts like a metal. Hydrogen's over there in group one, and it does have a plus one charge because it gives up its electron. So hydrogen kind of acts like a metal. And so the other part of the acid is going to be the non-metal. And when that non-metal comes from the periodic table, it's called a binary acid. And so when we're naming a binary acid, we would look at that non-metal. It comes from the periodic table and we're going to need to use the prefix hydro and the suffix ic. The word would begin with hydro. We would have the root word of the non-metal and then it's going to end with ick. Here's an example of a binary acid. It starts with an H, that's an acid. The second element is iodine, straight from the periodic table. That's how we know it's a binary acid. Binary acids, when we name them, need the prefix hydro and the suffix ick. And the root word is going to come from iodine. So we have hydroiodic acid. Kind of sounds weird, huh? Hydro is the prefix, that iode, that's from iodine, and then ick is the suffix. And then we just add that word acid. Let's try another one. Here we have H3P. Again, P is a nonmetal from the periodic table. That's how we know this is a binary acid. And we need to use hydro and ick. So we have hydrophosphoric acid. The prefix hydro, the root word from phosphorus, phosphor, ick hydrophosphoric acid. So let's talk about oxy acids now. An oxy acid always contains oxygen. This oxygen is always present as part of a polyatomic ion. Now there's two main polyatomic ion endings. The polyatomic ions mostly end in eight, like phosphate, sulfate, carbonate, or ite, nitrite, sulfite, phosphite. So if our oxy acid contains a polyatomic ion that ends in ite, we're going to change that ending to us, O-U-S. And if our oxy acid has a polyatomic ion that ends in eight, we're going to change the ending to ick. Even though acids are molecular compounds, they are held together with covalent bonds, we don't use prefixes because like I said, acids are a little bit different and they kind of act like ionic compounds, and ionic compounds doesn't use prefixes, neither do acids. Now I have this mnemonic device to help us remember that ite ending of a polyatomic ion changes to us, and eight polyatomic ion ending changes to ick, and that is mighty mouse hates icky acid. Now I know, I spelt mighty wrong, and I spelt mighty the way it is, so it would contain the ending I-T-E. If a polyatomic ion ends in ite, we're gonna change it to us. And if the polyatomic ion ends in eight, we're gonna change it to ick. Mighty Mouse hates icky acid. We have H3PO4. And I'm hoping that you notice 
there's an oxygen. This is an oxy acid. That oxygen is part of a polyatomic ion. We know this is a polyatomic ion because we have multiple elements working together in a unit. We need to identify what PO, we need to identify the polyatomic ion PO4. PO4 is phosphate. You see that ending? Eight. And since PO4 is phosphate, it ends in ATE. That means we're gonna change the ending to IC. We're not gonna use the prefix hydro that's only for binary acids. This is an oxy acid. So this is just going to be phosphoric acid. We changed the eight to ic, phosphoric acid. Let's try another one, HNO2. Again, we can see that this acid has an oxygen and that oxygen is part of a polyatomic ion. We can identify the polyatomic ion because there's multiple elements working together as a unit, NO2. We need to identify that polyatomic ion before we can go any farther. NO2, that's nitrite, I-T-E. Nitrite ends in I-T-E. That means we're gonna change the ending to O-U-S. This is nitrous acid. Now when I'm talking about naming acids, I always like to show these three grouped together to just kind of show the progression, the different ways to name the binary acids and the oxy acids. This first example is H2S. This is a binary acid, two elements only, binary, two. And S comes straight from the periodic table. Binary acid, we need the hydro and the X. We've got hydrosulfuric acid. Here, H2SO3, where SO3 is sulfite. So we've got sulfurous acid, because remember, it changes to S, sulfurous acid. Then this last example, SO4, we've got sulfate. When the ending is eight, we change it to ic, so we get sulfuric acid. I just wanted us to see the difference between binary, oxy with an it, oxy with an eight hydrosulfuric, sulfurous, sulfuric. In chemistry, these prefixes and suffixes, they are very important because if we get the wrong prefix or suffix, we've got a completely different compound. Okay, so you are ready to start practicing. Again, I have practice problems in my link below. Go check that out. I also have an answer key. If you're struggling, rewatch this video. Until next time, bye y'all.